Hey everyone, welcome back to Virtualization How To. Today we're diving into a new mini PC that checks all the right boxes the GMK Tech Knuckbox M7 Pro. If you're looking for a powerful gaming rig or a versatile home lab setup, this little box has the potential to do whatever you need it to do. So let's dive into the specs of this mini PC. Now a word about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Nakivo. Are you looking for a powerful and reliable backup solution for your home lab or enterprise environment? Look no further than Nakivo Backup and Replication. Nakivo is an excellent data protection software that offers comprehensive backup and recovery options and lets you use your NAS or a simple VM deployment as a backup appliance. Nakivo supports a wide range of environments, including Proxmox VE, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, KVM, and EC2 instances, along with SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365. Plus, they offer a free version for up to 10 VMs, and that makes it an ideal choice for both home lab setups and enterprise backups. This GMK Tech Nutbox M7 Pro packs an AMD Ryzen 9 Pro 6950H processor, which has eight cores and 16 threads. It also has a turbo boost frequency of up to 4.9 gigahertz. It's also got integrated AMD Radeon 660M graphics, which is comparable to the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti. Now for a mini PC, this is quite powerful when we're talking about graphics, and it allows you to do gaming and handle multiple demanding workloads, such as video editing. On top of that, it has dual USB 4, USB-C video inputs, HDMI 2.1 supporting 8K displays, and an Oculink port for external GPU setups. The cooling is handled by what they refer to as Hyper Ice Chamber 2.0 design, which keeps this little mini PC relatively quiet even under demanding workloads. Now, one of the main reasons this mini PC caught my attention is the home lab potential. The Nutbox M7 Pro comes equipped with dual Intel i226V 2.5 gig LAN ports, which is perfect, I think, for running hypervisors in the home lab. And being Intel-based, you can you have the choice between VMware ESXi or Proxmox. You can opt also to buy it with RAM and storage or a bare bones unit, which I think makes this a great option for home labbers and others who may already have a stock of RAM on the home lab workbench and storage that they want to install. The unit that I was sent came with 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, which is expandable up to 96 gigs. It also has two M.2 slots. So this thing is really ready for some serious virtualized workloads. And if you want to run VMware ESXi 8.0 Update 3, you can also use that extra slot for NVMe memory tiering. See my video on that as well. Now, if you've worked with VMware ESXi on other mini PCs, you know how frustrating it can be to work with non-uniform processors, entering boot parameters, but this Ryzen 9's uniform cores makes installing VMware ESXi a breeze. No special boot parameters needed, just install and go. And Proxmox, of course, as always, has no issues with these various types of hardware setups. But again, I have the question often posed to me, which mini PC is also good for VMware ESXi and Proxmox? So you've got that choice. And this M7 Pro definitely will allow you that flexibility. But also, let's not forget about the gaming. It has the integrated Radeon 680M graphics with FSR 3.0 Plus support that makes it possible to enjoy some pretty serious gaming. And if you want more power for your games, no problem. It has the Oculink port, which allows you to make use of the eGPUs that are available on the market. Simply plug in an external GPU to this Oculink port and you can run modern graphics cards that you may already own or if you want to upgrade in the future. This feature opens up a whole new world of possibilities, especially for those of you that want the option of running the latest games without breaking the bank on a full gaming PC. This this Oculink port provides much better performance even than the Thunderbolt 4 ports that some of the eGPUs are linked up to your mini PC through. It allows you to more fully reach the potential of your external graphics hardware. Now, let's talk about something else that's extremely important if you're using this as a home lab mini PC. 
and that is power efficiency. One thing I really love about the GMK Tech Nugbox M7 Pro is just how power efficient it really is. In my testing, at idle it hovers around 15 watts, and even under full load, using STUI and the Linux Stress Utility, I only saw that it pulled around 73 watts. So for the performance that this thing really packs, those are impressive numbers. You still have a tremendous amount of power that doesn't sacrifice the performance. So here we are looking at the front of the M7 Pro and you can see the Oculink port all the way in the front. You've got the USB 4 port, two USB-A 3.2 ports, the audio slash headphone jack, and also the power button. So nice layout in the front, got good IO connectivity there with the Oculink and other ports. Flipping around to the back, we can see the healthy IO that we have around the back of the M7 Pro. Here we have the USB-A ports. We got display port, HDMI port, two Intel, two and a half gig network adapters, USB 4 port, and the radial power connection on the back. So I wanna show you guys the top cover and how it comes off. It's a little bit quirky, but you actually just unscrew it uh, by turning it counterclockwise. And this is a little bit tricky in my opinion. I would have liked to have seen something a little bit easier. Also, you can see the top lid is very prone to fingerprints. As I turn it into the light at an angle where you can see those, it is just riddled with fingerprints. So unless you're handling it with nitrite gloves, you're going to get a ton of fingerprints on the unit. To remove that inside cover with the fan, you can see the larger Phillips head screws that are in each corner of the lid. So what I'm doing here is just loosening those on each corner and then once those are loosened and out or you can just leave them in the cover once they have released and the top lid just will pull up and swing over to the to one side now a bit of a caution here you've got the fan that will be plugged in as you're taking that lid off so don't uh, just really come up aggressively with that lid from the m7 pro so i'm just going to gently set this to the side you can see the cable that is still attached to the fan so here we see the cable that is still attached to the fan and you don't have a whole lot of length on that so do note that and with that we've got access to the inside internals and you can see the RAM slots, the two of those uh, here on the left hand side of the unit. Then you see the pre-installed NVMe drive in the M.2 slot and then you also see that secondary M.2 slot. Now let's quickly run through the pros and cons of this Nuckbox M7 Pro. First off, the pros. It's got the powerful Ryzen 9 processor with uniform cores and that means you don't have to deal with boot parameters if you're wanting to install VMware ESXi and deal with those headaches. It also has dual 2.5 gig LAN ports that are Intel based. So again, VMware ESXi support. DDR5 memory in this unit allows you to expand up to 96 gigs of memory. It also has two M.2 slots for storage flexibility, not to mention the Oculink port for external GPU support, which I think is really a game changer, especially if you want to play modern games or if you want to use your virtualized setup for something like GPU pass-through from the hypervisor. But let's look at the cons of this unit. Now, I don't think that there are a lot of cons with the GMK Tech Nugbox M7 Pro, but I wanna mention a couple of things to note. The translucent top cover, as we saw in the unboxing and just physical overview of the unit, is a bit quirky to unscrew, as you will, and screw back on. And it also is really, really bad to pick up fingerprints. So just know that you're going to be wiping off this unit or you're just going to have a lot of fingerprints on the unit. All in all, this GMK Tech Nutbox M7 Pro is one of the best mini PCs I've reviewed late in 2024. If you need a powerful machine for gaming or a flexible home lab setup, this little mini PC is definitely one to check out. 
The external GPU support via the Oculink port really gives you a lot of options in terms of versatility and use cases for this hardware. And with the two Intel network adapters, two M.2 storage adapters, you've got a lot of flexibility when it comes to running virtual machines, containers, experimenting with things like NVMe memory tiering, and a lot of other options. If you're interested in picking up one of these nice little mini PCs, I've got links in the description for the video. Well, thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more home lab and virtualization content here on the Virtualization How-To channel. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do stay safe out there, guys. Keep on home labbing, and I will see you on the next video.